testing one, two.
Good evening, everyone. I invite you to stand for the Decalogue. God spake these words and said, I am the Lord thy God who brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have none other gods but me. Upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not make to thyself any graven image, nor the likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or in the earth beneath, or in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down to them, nor worship them. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Lord, have mercy upon us, and our hearts to keep this law. Remember that thou keep holy the Sabbath day. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Honor thy father and thy mother. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt do no murder. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not steal. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not covet. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, renew in us the gift of mercy, increase our faith, strengthen our hope, enlighten our understanding, widen our charity, and make us ready to serve you. Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, you have called Cuthbert from the following the flock to be a shepherd of your people. Mercifully grant that as he sought in the dangerous and remote places those who have erred and strayed from your ways, so may we seek the indifferent and the lost, that we may lead them back to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Word of God, written in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 34, verses 11 through 16. For thus says the Lord God, I, make, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out, as the shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the water courses and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak. But the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. The word of the Lord.
from the Word of God, written in the second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 6, verses 1 to 10. As we work together in Christ, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found with our ministry, but as servants of God, we are commended ourselves in every way, through great endurance and afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, troopless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God. God, with the holiness of, no, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, and in repute and good repute, we are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet as well known, as dying and see we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, and yet possessing everything. The word of the Lord.
where a slave will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God well. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, they neither sow nor reap, nor gather into farms, and yet our heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothed the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow and is thrown into the oven, will he not be more, much more clothed than you, you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, say, what will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For did the Gentiles strive for all these things? And indeed, your Heavenly Father knows that you need of all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Christ our Lord. No, no, no. The Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Waiters. Seven 
St. Matthew chapter 6, Jesus told his disciples, No one can serve two masters, which was followed by him telling them, Do not worry, do not get anxious about your life, what you will eat, or what you will drink. Or about your body, what you will wear. This gospel is about serving two masters, or not serving two masters, and about not to worry. In this scripture, how do we only tell the millions of devout Christians? Who go hungry every day? Who go without clean drinking water every day? Who go literally without any clothing on their backs or no shoes to wear every day? That they must not worry about their life. These people for most of their lives, if not all, were not blessed, it seems, with the abundance of the basic products for survival. And then, us preachers of the gospel, with our bellies filled, with enough cleaning water to drink, and lots of pretty clothes will tell them not to worry, have no fear, be strong, have faith, trust and obey God, give thanks and he will come through for you. Have hope, have hope in these anxious times. No need to worry. God is on your side. My brothers, this is easier said than done. Are we humans or are we of a different species of creature? Yes, we are humans. Yes, we are humans. As humans, even when we have enough, you know that, we worry. Hmm? Even when we have enough, we worry. We are warriors and thus cause ourselves to have high blood pressure, diabetes, heart disease, stroke, and all the rest of There is a saying that says we should never criticize someone until we can walk in his shoes. Yes, my brothers and sisters, the Lord has blessed this earth richly with all types of food, clothing, and clean water, and many other great products and items and materials. God is able 
and he creates all things. He owns everything. All things are possible with God. Turn to somebody and say, all things are possible with God. For the rest of us to breathe. Therefore, God's natural clean air is no more. And so, the ozone layer of this earth we call home is compacted with fossil fuels, poisonous gases, which is creating what is real climate change. And climate Of the gospel says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. My friends, humanity needs to acknowledge that the soil, the seeds, the wool, the heat, the light, the sun, the water, the rain, the winter, spring, summer, and fall. All come from God. Humanity needs to acknowledge that all teachings of knowledge, skills, strength, patience, hope, faith, love, that the God of love, and all things are from God. Nothing. God owns everything. Turn to somebody and tell that person, we don't own anything. God's own everything.
Yes. We own nothing. All that we have were loaned to us by God to enjoy for a while. Even our children is a loan to us from God. God is the one who has allowed our accomplishments and so unless the Lord has blessed Folks, we will not be able to take a new hard truck in our funeral procession with all the material stuff that we have acquired. We have never seen that before. Are you hard truck going in a funeral procession? My friends. Lazarus was poor. Not because he wanted to be poor. Tragic circumstances made him to be so. Beavis was rich because fortunate circumstances had made him so. Beavis said came about because he felt that the difference and condition between Lazarus and himself was a proper condition of life. He felt that this was the way things were to be. Beavis allowed his brother to be invisible. Are you going to see your brother and sister in need and allow them to be invisible? You don't have to. And Davis is currently the American campus who never seeks to bridge the economic gulf between himself and the laborer because he feels that it is natural for some to live in inordinate luxury while others live in abject poverty. Davis's sin was not that he was cruel to Lazarus, but that he refused to bridge the gap of misfortune that existed between them. His sin was not being a wealthy man. Nothing wrong with being wealthy. I hope we have some wealthy people in this congregation so that you can maybe give Father Anthony some too, huh? So, being rich is not a curse. His sin was not being a wealthy man. His wealth, as a matter of fact, was an opportunity. Was an opportunity for him. His sin was his refusal to bridge the gap. Do you know some greedy people who don't want to give anything away? Or if, they, if somebody needs a coat, they'll give them a coat with the hole in it. Mm -hmm. That was his sin, refusal to bridge the gap. Turn to somebody and say, bridge the gap. Bridge the gap. Bridge the gap. My brothers and 
and sisters, as Christians, we need to use the engineering power of love to build the bridge of love and compassion between the haves and the have-nots. And yes, the devious in the church today, who do you think the devious is of? In the church today, they are those evangelical parents who pride and poor people so that they and their families get rich and they twist and interpret the Bible so as to self gain through their prosperity teaching, which is all a lie. We need to sow here on earth hopefully among our less fortunate brothers and sisters so we can reap bountifully by giving it enriches us in every way we must do what is right and fight against principalities and powers in high places and dr king martin luther king jr once said again I will quote Dr. King, it is always right to do right. And he said, love because it is lovely to love. And he said, be honest because it is right to be honest. And he said, be just because it is right. To be just. As Second Corinthians six tells us, Second Corinthians we read tonight, read tonight, says, Now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. Are you going to let this time go away and you do nothing to help your fellow man and woman? Hmm? This is the time to do something for our brothers and sisters. Do not let this time that you are given run so on you and me. My brothers and sisters, doing ministry for God, we need to feed people physically, and we also need to feed them spiritually. Emotionally, mentally. If someone is hungry, they will not listen to any pastor preaching. Their belly will be crying. Nobody will hear you. We need to provide for people physically, spiritually, emotionally, and mentally. And then they will get the spiritual part. You know, we have a saying in my little country beliefs. Says empty crocus bag can't stand up. Yeah. Empty crocus bag can't stand up. So if somebody is hungry, how do you think you will be able to minister unto them? My friends, let it not be too late for us to really love your neighbor as yourself. A judgment. You will need to give a account of what you did for your fellow man and woman. And yes. And I'll soon finish. I hope nobody's sleeping. Uh, there was also. There was also a gulf. Between God. And humankind. But God felt. That that gulf should not exist. Therefore, God bridged that gulf. And how he did it? By sending his only begotten son, his only son Jesus, to die for us at Calvary. And so that gulf was bridged. That cross. Is the bondless bridge of God's love connecting time and eternity, connecting man 
and God. So the rich person who doesn't care about the poor is serving another master. They are not serving God. When I started this sermon, I said, you cannot serve two masters. But they are not serving two masters. They are serving one, but they are serving their richness. That is what they are serving. But us Christians, with a little love and compassion, if we preach again, between our fellow brothers and sisters, if we preach again, yep. between our fellow brothers and sisters, then we can truly tell them you don't have to worry about what to wear or what to drink or what to eat. And you can even sing to them the Bob Marley song. Don't worry. Hey. About thing, cause everything's gonna be alright. I won't sing the whole for you. My friends, my friends, let us bridge that gulf between our less fortunate brothers and sisters before it's too late. Amen. Amen. Let's stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in God, God Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten of our faith, of one day with the Father. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who is the chief of the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. The Lord upholds all of the law and lifts up all who are bowed down. God is love. Hear the cry of those who learn to love. Fractured families, broken homes, and blessings. Unwanted, alone. God is love. Hear the cry.
and to give glory to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We sit for our devotion. Have no sin to deceive ourselves. 
But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins against God our neighbor and And by what we
To him thou crit your care.
special intention of the Eucharist is offered to God in thanksgiving and prayer for the life and work of the church and especially for the Jamaica deanery. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We give them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right, a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and our archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. <laughs> Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of our faith. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O oh Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, 
the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask for your Son, Jesus Christ, by Him and with Him and in Him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, with boldness we sing. this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share one bread. The gifts of God for the people of God. Our soul will feast and be satisfied, and we will sing glad songs of praise to
Shall we all rise for the post communion prayer? Together we say, Almighty and ever living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for showing us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son, the heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The peace of God which passeth all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you this evening. Amen. Amen. You should all be seated for the announcement. Yes, you can have to welcome to this service at St. Gabriel Episcopal Church. It's my pleasure to welcome all of you, especially the clergy present and the respected congregation. I just stand over to the Lord before I get to the
will be always with us on Saturday, the 3rd through Sunday, which is Resurrection Sunday, the following week. And then Election Day, which is April 2nd. Thank you. Thank you. Again, a uh, last welcome to all of you and welcome to St. Gabriel Episcopal Church. I will join the Dean in inviting all of the members of St. Gabriel who came out to make this service what it was and to extend hospitality to each of you. The Dean's colors are as correct. We smell fresh biscuits, we smell fresh soup, everything is fresh. <laughs> So, unlike other places that have new parish halls to show off, you will show off on the fresh food to you this evening. Every second of you, please. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.